And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. One of my favorite games to play is Defenders of the Realm. It's a fantastic uh, cooperative game in which players are trying to stop four generals of evil marching into their land. You go around and fight the minions, stop the corruption and taint of the land. Just, it's, it's really cool. Lots of fun. And it's one that I play quite a bit. There's already been an expansion for it that added dragons. But now what we want to look at today are some smaller expansions. We have Heroes Expansion 1, Heroes Expansion 2, and Heroes Expansion 3. And I also wanted to take a brief look at the painted miniatures which are out for the game. Now, these are cool. They don't really change the game very much. They basically just add some more heroes. So let's take a look at these and the painted miniatures. All three hero expansions come with plastic miniatures, which are just very similar to the plastic heroes that were in the original game. And this, so this is what comes in all three of them, these heroes here. But we're going to take a quick look at the painted miniatures, and that's why I'm, I'm kind of mixing these reviews together. And the painted miniatures, now, I'm sure you could argue over whether they could be better painted or not. I'm a horrible painter, so I think these things are stinking awesome. They really add some flair to the game. So these are all the painted heroes from the uh, expansions and from the original set. I'm just showing you, you know, so you can get an idea of what all the miniatures look like uh, in this game. You can also get painted miniatures if you remember your bosses from the original game uh, looked kind of like the minions to some degree, but they now have uh, the painted versions, which really kind of make them stand out more. You can see the bosses and the painted dragon. If you've had the, the dragon set, he looks very similar to those. But this just adds, again, some really nice color to your board. So the painted miniatures are nice. But what we want to do here, real briefly, uh, is talk about what comes in these expansions, okay? There's three boxes w worth of expansions, and each one comes with heroes, four heroes. Now, this one has five because it includes the figure for the Paladin, which was kind of like a promo figure that you could get. Uh, each of these comes with a bunch of heroes, uh, the hero cards that come in that one, and a bunch of these global effect cards. These are cards, this is the only time I'll talk about these, but these can add negative or positive global effects across the land. For example here, the Blessed Blades. All wound boxes for all generals except Sapphire considered red, delaying healing for a round. That's a good thing. While a negative thing here might be if the Monarch City Darkness Spreads card is drawn, an equal number of minions are placed in the Monarch City matching the number of minions surrounding it. So they could be negative or they could be positive things, and you can kind of customize your deck to some degree, making it harder or easier. But let's talk about expansion number one first. The heroes that come in expansion number one. So let's take a closer look at the heroes here. Okay, first we have the Captain of the Guard, who very well may be my favorite of all the new expansion heroes. I really like him. He can he can move on horse, which basically lets him move twice for regular movement. Uh, he has uh, some special tokens that he can give other people. Instead of using his own actions, he can basically spend actions to give other people extra actions, which can be really handy. And he can kind of negate some of the darkness spreads cards, or at least make it so only one of colors show up instead of two. The assassin uh, has a, is easier to kill your opponent's things, and also you have the ability to shadow walk, to vanish. So that's a pretty neat one, and I think a lot of people are going to want to play with the assassin just because of the name itself. But uh, when the assassin also has kind of a negative teamwork thing where you can be the first one to attack a general if you want to when you're in a group. The chaos wizard can move you, uh, spend an action, discard a hero card to move to any location matching the color so they can move around pretty quickly, kind of like the wizard, but they can also draw the top card and do some magic, basically chaotic magic. Uh, it can be powerful or it might not be. The Adventurer. This is a, a really good one. This is about getting more cards in your hand. The Adventurer can have 14 cards in her hand. The Adventurer, can, if they enter a spot in a treasure chest location, they can roll three dice and every five or six gives them an extra card. They get extra cards from going to inns. Uh, and when they do quests, 
They get an extra die. Uh, this is a really good one, especially for new players to use, I think, the adventurer, because their focal point is clear. They're going around and they are adventuring, and that will help them hopefully beat the generals. In pack two, we have the Elf Lord. The Elf Lord always goes first, but the Elf Lord can move into green spots and can add extra dice when fighting against thing. But one of the best things about the Elf Lord is this reroll token that you can use to reroll uh, once per round, not just your dice, but someone else's dice. So will you wait to the critical die rolls and an Elf Lord can make all the difference in the world. The healer, well, not a lot of talking here, but the healer can go around and help heal up other heroes. Not very useful in a small player game, but in larger player games can be really handy. I mean, and I mean, who doesn't want a healer on their team? The monk is neat because if a monk rolls a six, it counts as two hits. And also has some defensive moves. And then it has two quests that it's hunting down. It's pretty neat, although the picture just doesn't really look like a monk, but go figure. The druid, uh, they can get rid of uh, tainted crystals without having to get rid of cards just by rolling dice. And they can summon animals in different locations, bears and wolves, to attack minions. So that can be really helpful in the green location. So the druid's kind of tied to the green locations. Then in the third expansion, we have the thief. And the thief can draw extra cards for from the troops. You can steal battle plans and uh, you can re-roll some. It, this is probably... This is okay. Uh, I don't think her special abilities are that great, but she does have six actions. The only one, all, most of these have six or five actions. The only two that have six are the Seeker and the Thief. The Seeker here can kind of look at the top darkness spread card so you can see what's coming up ahead. Uh, and let's move on to the, the Shaman. This is probably my second favorite character of all of them because he can spend an action and roll die to shoot arrows at any location on the board. That's, that's neat enough as it is. However, the problem is there's a possibility of tainting the land. If you roll an odd number, you taint the land. So it's kind of tricky, but man, sometimes that just might matter. And he can change into two different beasts forms. He can change into a wolf or a bear. A bear gets to re-roll dice, and a wolf can move two spots. And if he's in a green spot, a green location doesn't suffer any hits by the enemy. I really enjoy the shaman and the options he has. That's fun because of what you get to choose. And then the feline, which is put in there for all the furries, I guess, who want to play the game. Uh, they are, she has shadow where she can hide uh, from the enemies. And if she beats two or more minions in a battle, she'll get one of her action tokens back. So she could conceivably go many times, although they do say she has a maximum of seven actions per turn. And when she rolls a natural one in combat, she can re-roll it again the first time. So these are neat. And with all these heroes, plus all the original heroes in the game, you really have a ton of different options. Do you need these? Well, not really. I mean, I love having them. I mean, this is 12 more uh, heroes to throw into the mix. It means basically that every Defenders of the Realm game that I'm ever going to play is completely different, and I like that aspect. Uh, but at the same time, you know, this is a lot. The painted miniatures, are they worth it? Well, I think they look really cool, and, and they're a great addition to the game, but they aren't the cheapest things in the world either. Now, here's what I would say. I really think you should, if you're going to get any painted miniatures, you should hunt down the generals, because the painted generals really do enhance the game. I like them a lot. And if you were going to get any one of these three expansions, just one of them to add, wow, that would be a tough one. Because I like the first one. It has the Captain of the Guard and the Adventure and the Chaos Wizard. That's good. The third one, the Seeker, the Shaman, Feline, the Thief. You know what? That's probably the one I would get last. It's not that I don't like those characters. I don't like them as much. I get them in order. I get one first, then two, then three. I really do like the Elf Lord and the Monk and the Druid. But man, that Adventure and Captain of the Guard, I don't know. Lots of cool characters, lots of good stuff. Defenders of the Realm is a great game. This just makes it greater. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.